All right, so what is up guys? In the past few videos, I showed you how you can use Kotlin and essentially the very basics of getting started with Kotlin. So now I thought it's about time we actually get started with a very small project and this is going to be a coin flip simulation and we are gonna flip millions of coins with just one line of, uh, not one line of code, but just one block of code essentially. And yeah, it's gonna be a very fast and simple project. It's gonna cover everything that we've already gone over in the past 11 or 12 videos. And let's get started immediately. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a few global variables and let's create them right now. So we're gonna do private var coin flips. And this is gonna keep track of the amount of flips we do. Then we're going to write private var heads wins. And this is going to keep track of how many times heads won. And private var tails wins. Which is also going to be initialized at zero. And that's going to keep track of how many times tails wins. And now we're going to go to our function main. And the first thing we're going to write is a print statement. Which is going to ask the user how many times do they want to flip the coin. So flip the coin how many times. And then we're going to assign that number to a value and that value is going to be used to determine how many coin flips there are. So let's create that value. It's going to be value number of times and that's going to equal read line, which must not be null and it's going to be casted to an integer. And right below we're going to create a for loop and we are going to write i in zero until number of times. So it's going to take that number we entered and it's going to loop this loop for that amount of times. And inside here, we are going to create a value of random. So it's gonna be value random. And that's gonna equal the range one to two. And we're gonna call the method random right after it. And that's gonna generate a random number every single time we loop the for loop. And every time we loop the for loop, it's going to simulate a coin being flipped. So we want to increment the coin flips by one. And inside here, we are going to write an if statement, which is gonna be if random is equal to one, we are going to increment the heads wins, else we will increment the tails wins. So what's happening here is we are creating a random number between one and two, and every time the number is one, it will be heads that wins, and if it's two, it's, we're just gonna use this else statement to say that tails won. So there's always gonna be a 50% chance and everything, and that's essentially what this random keyword does. You can actually put any number you want in here, and it will generate a random number between that but one to two is fine for this example. And then down here, we are going to write print line, and this is going to keep track of how many times the coins have been flipped, and it's gonna show the user that the screen is loading. So we're just gonna write coins flipped, and we're gonna put the double dots, and we are going to interpolate the coin flips. And then down here, I'm gonna show you something new that you can do with strings, and if we write print line, and instead of just writing one pair of quotation marks, we write three you will see that it will add this special trim indent at the bottom. And this is essentially just a free block that you can write whatever you want and it will stay in the position you write it. And the trim indent just gets rid of the indent that you might find over here. So that is great. So the first thing we're gonna do is total flips and that's going to equal the interpolated coin flips. I will add a space there to give it some space between the previous print line. Now we're gonna make this divider, which are three simple hyphens and we're gonna write heads one, heads wins times and below we'll do tails one, tails wins times. And we'll make another small divider down here. And this is the entire program that is going to simulate our coin flips. And now if we click on run, you'll see you get this dialog that says flip the coins how many times. And we'll say, we'll start off with 10. So you'll see coins flipped one, coin flip two, coin flip three, all the way to 10. It will tell you the total flips and it will tell you who won and how many times. So this time it was flipped 10 times, heads won seven and tails won three times. And if we go to 1000, you'll see it will generate a thousand coins and it will have said that heads won 486 times and tails won 514 times. And now finally for the final simulation, which is gonna be 1 million coins. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and we've got 1 million coins to be flipped and we will tap enter. And you will see it actually takes quite a bit of time on my computer to generate all those coins and all those print line statements. But after a million print line statements later, we will have had all of these coins flipped and you'll see the number actually seems to even out in the end. So even though sometimes it may seem biased, 
when you use the random statement such as that, you'll see heads one three times, tails one nine. But even though it may seem biased, as soon as you enter a large number such as, let's say, 2000, you'll see that it starts to even out and that the 50% chance in the coin flip stands. And I'm not really a master of probability or statistics, but it's good to know that this random function can be counted on. Although there are even more secure random functions, these should not be used for passwords or any kind of, these are very weak random number generations, but that's a completely different subject. This is good for those basic random numbers. But anyways, I hope this video helped and in the next video, we'll be going over how to use functions and how to save a lot of time using functions. And yeah, thanks for watching this video. If it was useful to you, please consider leaving a like. And other than that, I will see you in the next video.